Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel and today we're going to be taking a look at the EcoFlow River 2, going over its specs, basic features, and also talk about ways that this could be used in both short-term emergencies as well as long-term disaster situations. I'd like to thank EcoFlow for sending the River 2 and some solar panels for us to take a look at today and for sponsoring this video. So getting into some basics, the River 2 has a capacity of 256 watt hours and LFP or lithium iron phosphate batteries. And having this kind of battery chemistry is a big improvement over previous models of EcoFlow power stations. LFP batteries can last for a much longer period of time. It can go 3000 cycles before it reaches 80% of its original capacity. So that basically means you can use it six times a week for the better part of a decade before you reach that 80% mark and that makes it a good choice if you're looking for a viable long-term power source. It can handle up to 300 total running watts and up to 600 surge watts although it does have X boost which we'll talk about later in the video. As far as outlets go it has two AC ports one of which is grounded, two USB-A ports, one USB-C port, and a 12 volt port. And y'all, if you get done watching this video and you think the River 2 is something you might be interested in picking up, then be sure to use this coupon code and the links in the description below to get 8% off until November 2nd. And as y'all can tell, this is a smaller solar power option. And while larger ones can power bigger devices and have a greater capacity, smaller units like this do have some advantages. First off, they tend to be much cheaper than their larger counterparts. So if you're somebody that doesn't have like a thousand or $1,500 to spend on a power station and some panels, this might be a little bit more in your budget range. Smaller power stations like this one are also going to be more portable. The River 2, it weighs less than 8 pounds, which I think is around 3 pounds less than the original River. It's also shorter and more narrow as well. But this means that pretty much anybody is going to be able to pick this up and carry it around. Even if you're somebody who's not in the best of health, having something small like this is going to be a lot easier to maneuver than some of the larger ones, which can weigh 40 pounds just for the power station itself. This doesn't weigh anywhere close to that. And also something like this, it's going to be good for apartment dwellers. Maybe you don't have that much space. You can easily fit this in a set of 110 watt panels like the ones behind me in something like a closet. And if you need to bug out or you're just going on like a camping trip or a road trip, then this is going to be easy to load up in your car. It's not going to take up nearly as much room as some larger options. It would also be easier to protect in a makeshift Faraday cage. Even something like a galvanized steel trash can with something insulating inside of it could be used to protect a small power station like this one. As far as charging methods go, using AC power from a wall outlet or generator, it can go from 0 to 100% in an hour. This is thanks to EcoFlow's Extreme Charging Technology. And EcoFlow, they do tend to do better than other power station manufacturers in regards to charging time. I know I have another power station by a different manufacturer. I think it could take several hours to charge theirs from a wall outlet. And being able to charge something like this quickly, it's very advantageous if there's something like a storm coming through and you just wanna to top it off. Or if you're in a situation where you're dealing with a lot of cloudy and overcast weather and using solar panels might not be viable, you can very easily hook this up even to a small inverter type generator, run that generator for an hour to get this back up to 100%, and then you can shut that other generator off and save your fuel while this powers devices that you need it to. Using a 110 watt solar panel like this one, it'll take somewhere between three and six hours to fully recharge the unit. And to use the River 2 with solar panels, start by unfolding the panels and then centering them on their carrying case, attach the D-rings on the case to the grommets on the panels, and then set the panels upright. From there, secure the other two D-rings to the bottom of the panel and position them so that they'll get the most sunlight. Then attach the cables on the panels to the solar charging cable. It's pretty straightforward since they only go together one way. Then plug the cable into the back of the power station. This will allow you to use the River 2 to power essential devices even during extended grid down situations. 
You can also use the 12 volt plug in your car to charge it in around three hours. And this is good if you're wanting to take it with you on a road trip, maybe you're camping, or you're in some sort of situation where you're having to leave town for an emergency, you can top this off as you're going down the road. And the River 2 can also be recharged using the USB-C port on the front of the device. The River 2 also has a feature called X-Boost, which allows it to run some devices that would normally require more than 300 running watts, which is what this can handle. And it's more well suited for simple devices, things like hair dryers on a low setting or corded drills that would normally maybe require just a little bit more power. This kind of acts just as a governor that says I'm going to cap you at 300 watts and if you want to shut down fine. But if you try to hook something up to this that's well beyond that limitation, like I tried to run a circular saw that I know pulls around 3,000 starting watts, which is significantly more than the inverter for this is rated for, then it's overload protection will kick in to protect the device. And to reset it, it's real easy. You just unplug the offending device from it and then turn the power supply back on and you should be good to go. And while a power station of this size isn't going to be able to handle larger devices like a full-size refrigerator or like a box freezer, you do still have some options if you're wanting to use it to keep your food cold. For example, you can use a 12-volt refrigerator freezer with the River 2 so that if there's a power outage, you can protect your most expensive groceries, things like meat and dairy. And it's also good if you're going on a road trip. My family and I, we used the refrigerator that I showed a second ago in a different EcoFlow model because I didn't have this one yet. When we went down to San Antonio just so we could buy groceries here where we live and then take them down with us. And if you're somebody who uses insulin or has other kinds of medications that need to be kept cool, then you could use the River 2 and a 12 volt refrigerator freezer to help you keep those medications cool at least for a few hours. The River 2 can also run other blackout essentials like lights and fans, most modern lights are LEDs, which don't use that much energy, so even small portable power stations like this one should keep them running for a while. And fans can go a long way towards making spring and summer power outages much more bearable. However, a better way to keep lights and fans running during a power outage is to use rechargeable batteries. Rechargeable AA and AAAs are good to have around since they can be used in flashlights and other small electronics, but you can also pick up larger rechargeable batteries as well, including D cells. Low discharge nickel metal hydride batteries like the ones that I showed have a pretty long lifespan. Some of mine are well over three years old and I haven't noticed any sign of battery degradation. So you combine those with something like this that has long lasting LFP batteries, you really do have a legitimate long term energy solution for essential devices. So the bottom line is when combined with good rechargeable batteries and efficient devices, the River 2 should help you keep things like battery operated lights and fans running even during extended grid down situations. And it can also do a good job charging other battery operated devices like cell phones, flashlights and portable battery banks, along with important communication devices devices like radios. Even if you don't have a dedicated emergency radio like this one, you can still use it to power other radios that you may have in your home. The River 2 can also power other small appliances like air mattress inflators and humidifiers, and it's always a good idea to have a humidifier and some distilled water to help deal with coughs. And another way that you can use the River 2 in something like the refrigerator that I showed a moment ago is to do things like create ice packs and cold compresses for helping with swelling from wounds. The River 2 is also capable of running some power tools. Even though it can't run larger things like table saws and the circular saw that I mentioned earlier, you should be able to run things like drills and small air compressors. But one way to expand the kinds of tools that you can run using a small power station is to use cordless power tools. The River 2 should have no problem charging cordless tool batteries, which means that you can use any tool that's compatible with those batteries, even if the corded variants may require too much power for this device. You can also find things like lights and fans that run on power tool batteries, which would be very useful during power outages or blackouts. Before I got my first generator or solar generator, I actually relied heavily on those like cordless power tool lights and fans during power outages just because they last for a long period of time. And even if I didn't have a generator, if I went to work or I went to somewhere that did have power, then I could charge those devices up that way. 
The River 2 is also compatible with the EcoFlow app, which you can use to monitor power levels, turn outputs on and off remotely, and control other settings as well. You can do things like adjust its AC charging speed and turn X-Boost on or off, along with adjust the unit's timeout and AC timeout settings. This is good if you're using it to power something like a motion sensor base station that may not draw power for an extended period of time. Setting the timeout to never will ensure that the device stays on and continues to pick up signals from any motion sensors that are connected to it. Another good thing about the app that a lot of people don't think about is that it keeps track of your power station serial numbers. So if something's stolen or it gets damaged and you need to file an insurance claim, then you'll have that information handy. But if you're somebody who doesn't like apps, then you can use this perfectly fine without that. It's just an additional option. Overall, I think that if you're wanting a small solar generator, then the River 2 combined with 110 watt solar panels is a good option. And while it isn't the most powerful power station that I've tested, including the previous River models, having LFP batteries, it does give it an edge from a longevity standpoint. It's nice to have something that could still be running long after other kinds of devices have started to suffer from severe battery degradation. It should be able to keep essential devices like lights, fans, and essential communication equipment up and running long term, and it can also be used occasionally for other tasks like using those 12 volt refrigerators or humidifiers. And the slogan for this is power has never been this easy and since it's so portable and the fact that it has such a long lifespan, I do think it is a good option if you're wanting a more simple kind of streamlined way to have an emergency power supply. So once again, thank you guys for stopping by. If you're interested in picking up the River 2, be sure to check out the links in the description below and be sure to use that discount code. Thank you all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.